Welcome to another episode of Eating While Broke. Today I have a very special guest, reality TV star, musician, mother, mm -hmm. Amina Butterfly is in the building. Yes, and I'm I'm very excited to have you here. I met you a couple years ago, and you were a breath of fresh air, very beautiful in person. Um, today, what will you have us eat? Okay, so I'm going to have us eat a super simple breakfast dish. Actually, it's two separate dishes, but um, they are easy to make, cheap, and, you know, something that I ate a lot during hard times. So one is a apples and oatmeal. The German term for it is apfelmüsli. And I actually used to eat it as well as I, you know, was growing up in Germany. And then I took it along with me into, you know, my, my struggle times <laughs> in New York. But the other one is a German pancake. Also super simple. And it's a little bit different than, you know, the pancakes that people are used to in America, the fluffy ones. It's more like a, almost like a crepe. But it's a German pancake and easy to make. Okay, so it's, it's apple, and apple and oats. And, oats. and, and then the, the German pancake. Okay. And I used to eat it for breakfast <laughs> all the time. So for the oats, what are the ingredients? So it's um, old-fashioned oats. Mm -hmm. It is apple. I use one apple for one serving. So if I just eat it by myself, it'll be one apple. And I put almonds, orange juice, and cinnamon. And that's it. And oh. it's not. it doesn't have to be cooked on the stove, so you can just... Wait a minute. How is it not cooked on the stove? You don't cook it on the stove. That's the that's okay, the good okay, part okay, about I'm it. I'm okay. Yeah, and then show you. <laughs> and then uh, for the pancakes, the pancakes ingredients are flour, milk, sugar, and eggs. Awesome. This is pretty simple. Yep. I've never heard of any of the above. I'm gonna ask you to repeat the name of the the when you said it in German. So I call it apfelmüsli. And it's apples and oats, basically, the translation. Okay, okay. Yeah. But it's in German. That's yep. what it sounds Absolutely. like. Okay, it sounds really special <laughs> when you say it. But, all right, um, so walk us through it. Go ahead, start. Okay, so should I, I go ahead with the apples. So okay. So you take a bowl, you um, peel the apple, so it has no peel on it, and then you need a shredder like this. And you just go all around um, until, you know, you come to the ah. And just so it. you know, if I would have like actually known about this dish, I would have helped you pre-make it. But or it's prep. good. Like it's literally, I it's super fast to make. This is probably the most um, annoying part because you know you get your fingers dirty and stuff like that. But uh -huh. it's an apple. It's an apple. Yeah, and it's an apple. I didn't know what kind of apples you like. I only eat Honeycrisp, but for this dish, I picked up Granny Smith. I love it. You can use <laughs> any. Apple that you like. If you like sweeter, you know, obviously you would pick like a pink lady or whatever you like. Any kind of apple works. And I was thinking more sour. That's why I chose. Sour is always good, even though this dish does not have any sugar. That's why what I like about it is healthy too. It's a super healthy breakfast dish, and that should be enough for this. I'm more curious how you're going to do this without a stove. Yeah, man. I'm this so, See, when I tell people about this dish, I actually posted it before on social media, <laughs> and people were like, "Wait, you don't cook the oats? I don't eat oats without you know without them being cooked." And so you just, I don't measure, as you see, I don't yeah. measure anything. I like that. That's a respectable I chef. I think that's yeah, a little bit more because it should be equal amount apple and oats. Okay. And then we take the chopped almonds. Just toss and them just in so there. you guys know, she actually by hand. <laughs> took a knife and just chopped the almonds. I did, but it, it also didn't take long. And then all I need is cinnamon, because that gives it the, the flavor that makes it so good. And then the orange juice. And we mix I've it never up. seen this. I know, like people like orange juice with oats, no way. But wait till you taste it, because the apple, it doesn't want to, you don't want to make it, you know, want to have it swim in it, but. You want it definitely nice and moist. And and this is something. This is is this like culturally normal in Germany? Um, you know what? I think it's it's actually my mom made it up. It's not a typical German recipe. Oh, okay. But it's something that my mom introduced me to, and I just remember that I used to always make it when I just was hungry in the morning and wanted something healthy and fresh. Cause you know I'm. It looks I'm super healthy. Fanatic. This is it, you guys. This is all. All Look you have to this. do, I, and th would this give be it a good mix. Vegan too? It's vegan. It's definitely. It's vegan, vegan. guys. I, I didn't just even... learned my first vegan dish. Yeah, I did not even 
even think about the the aspect of it being vegan. Yeah, that's what, a good thing. What was going on at the time when your mom had you was making up dishes like this? Was she were you guys struggling or? Yeah, we. I I mean, I don't know if I want to say struggling, but we definitely were poor. We didn't grow mm. up with much, and yeah. my mom never had much money. Single mom. Um, dad left when we when I was eight, and. Um, yeah, we never had much, even before when dad was around. Like, we were never a uh, family. It was like, eating out was like, wait, what? We never got to eat outside or like in a restaurant or something like that. So um, I definitely, my mom would always freestyle cook and do things like this. And that's, I think, where I got it from now as, you know, being my, having kids myself. I think I, I got a lot of my style of cooking from my mother, just whipping stuff together and then it coming out. Well, really let's good. let's sample it. Yes. So no cooking. She just mixed the apples with the oatmeal, <laughs> well the, the oats first. and orange juice and almonds, mm -hmm. and it looks delicious. And guys, I have just learned how to make my first vegan dish, um, which you guys know I'm trying to eventually switch over to vegan. So, and it looks oh, very you beautiful. Oh, yeah. Um, I. Are you vegan? I'm not vegan, but oh. um, I eat. I like to eat healthy, you know. I, yeah. I don't eat a lot of meat and stuff like that. Anyways. Let's see. I'm excited. What you think? <laughs> it's, it's not sweet. It's really good. You could add sugar if you like. It doesn't need sugar. You could also add. I think some that my apple I chose a Granny Smith, which was sour. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't. I was like, if I go sweet, but now I would choose. You could a probably apple. choose a sweeter apple, and you could also add like, if you like raisins. My mom used to put raisins in it. Um, I don't love raisins, so I always make it like this. Yeah, I would leave it like this. Yeah, and I, people, I love it. People are like orange juice with oats. I don't know about that, but with the apple, a part of me feels like I would mix this with a little bit of yogurt, but I don't know if that would mess it up. Mm, I just don't know about mixing orange juice with. Maybe, maybe you could You're try right. that. You're right. <laughs> this One thing's really for great. sure, it's super healthy and easy to make, and you don't need much. You can leave the almonds out if you do don't. Do your kids know how to make this? They, yeah, they absolutely do, but they, you know, I still make it for them just because. You don't want them to I don't want them themselves. to hurt their fingers on this. <laughs> but they know how to make it. I know this dish is good because I'm going to finish it. So yay. this is a 10 out of 10. Okay. Oh, yay. Um, See, it's not for everybody, but if you like me and you like something healthy in the morning, something quick. I will say in this dish too, if you're not a fan of oatmeal, mm -hmm. this is the best way to eat it. See, it doesn't taste like your typical oatmeal. It doesn't. Like, it does not like, like, you know, for me, oatmeal has textures that I don't really like, but yep. I could totally eat this every day. That's and what I, used to I do. think this will be my meal of choice because it's super healthy, super different. Mm -hmm. Even if you made a full breakfast and you just had this on the side. Crazy thing, the kids love it. My kids, at least, love it. And you know you're feeding your kids something good. I think the orange juice really seals it. Mm -hmm. That's the crazy part. The thing that people are questioning is what makes it. Kill that dish. Yay. What's the next one? So the next one. I think even easier and simpler. Um, that was amazing yay. for, I think that was the first time I actually enjoyed oatmeal 100%. Should I just go ahead and make it? This is um, gonna yeah. be the German pancake. Um, okay, go ahead. So, stove on. Because and she used the butter spray, guys. <coughs> I'm going to use the egg and the milk and the sugar. I think I need to job. pour a little bit out because we have too much too much flour. Oh, I'm mixing it with the. That's fine. Yeah, you're you're not. We're not gonna use that. Okay. <coughs> so all we need is the flour, the egg, the milk, and the sugar. Mix it all together. Flour, egg, milk, sugar. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not measuring. <coughs> I'm just. Oh, a light whisk. Yeah, whisk it as you pour the milk. So it doesn't... I feel so lazy because I always buy the pre-made <laughs> pancake mix and just add water. Oh, yeah. I never even, like, growing up, my mom made everything from scratch. And, again, this is something that came from home, from Germany. 
and that I brought with me once I, you know, we moved to New York, me and my sisters. I didn't have much either. <laughs> what made you guys move to New York? You know, music. Like, you know, me but and my you, sisters. At what age? Um, I was 19. Oh, okay. I was 19. Um, my twin, I have a twin sister, Jazz, who obviously also was 19 at the time. And then our older sister, Sophie, two years older. Um, so you guys moved, packed up together. We packed up and just moved to New York. Well, what was your mom saying? You know, she, what made her comfortable is that we were together. Okay. I think it was, if it would have been just one of us, like, it would have been different. But um, we were always together. She trusted us. She wasn't really concerned, which was crazy because we really went to New York with nothing, like, no plan, no no money, and, really. Well, did she did she also feel like she still had a choice in it, or you guys came, came to her and, like, we're leaving? Oh, yeah. We, we... We decided we were going, and she could. She wouldn't have been able to stop us, even if she. She didn't try, but if she would have said like, "No, I don't think it's a good idea," we, our mind was made up, <laughs> you know, to to go to New York. So she was a single mom with how many kids? She had twins. I'm she a had, twin, by the way. Oh yes. I'm a fraternal. But are you fraternal or identical? I am identical. Identical twin. My sister looks exactly like me. <laughs> no way. So People I can always be like here with her. Yeah. No, wow. it's me though. I have the I have the, <laughs> heart. the heart. People always like, is this Amina or the twin? That's hilarious. It's me. Okay, why is this foaming up like? <laughs> I don't know. Do you want? Do, do you want real uh uh I don't real butter mess up or the... oil? Let me get you a real butter or oil. <laughs> Sorry guys, we had to cut quickly because the oil I had given Amina was this butter spray, and it was foaming and. Neither of us have ever used it, so we switched it out with vegetable oil, which is something Amina is more familiar with cooking with. Yes. So your mom had your tw you and your your sister, and who else was in the house? Yes, um, me, my twin, our older sister, and then my mom had another child by another another man when I was eleven. So I have an eleven year younger sister also. So it was four of us, four girls. Wow. Yeah, but the three of us, the three of us are us older sisters we were very close and we would do everything together and we you know we started singing together so we were we've kind of always had been a group a singing group and you know it was the oh you guys were in a group yeah was there the, was no jealousy or rivalry between you and your sister absolutely not no we were more like I think we wouldn't have gotten into music even if it if we weren't sisters because it was a whole you know it was that that whole Singing in harmony, all of that stuff that we would do. You know, it was the 90s. 90s girl groups was Pop everywhere. Yeah. And we just wanted to be like them. And we just loved singing so much. So, yeah, it was always me and my two sisters, Twin and Sophie. So Jazz and Sophie. And the three of us. So y'all both been to New York. We just determined. Because we had already um, started out making songs. Actually, we were signed in Germany when I was 15 um, to a, a record label, BMG. And um, we've had a lot of experience, you know, being in the music industry, just never in America. That sounded like such a dream, <laughs> like yeah. so far away. Yeah. And you were so. you were learning about America through television and radio? <coughs> oh, yeah. Like um, American, just, nine, you know, R&B music yeah. in general wasn't made in Germany. So yeah. we were like, if we want to make that kind of music, we have to go to America. But that still sounded so, like, impossible. It was like... Did you know, a lot we can't of people go to America? Nobody does that. Did a lot of people in Germany look like you? Because when I imagine oh. Germany, I imagine now this is my ignorance speaking, but I would imagine more white. Am I wrong? Absolutely, for that? grew up with mostly white, like around white people. Yeah, <laughs> it was. We were the outsiders, and that's also one reason why I never felt home there. Never felt like I belonged there. I don't know if my sisters also felt it, but I can imagine. I mean, I just always felt like this is not where I belong. Are you Nobody looks are like you me. mixed or are you yes? What by are Rachel, you? My mom's white. Oh, Dad, your mom's white. That is African Senegalese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, we were the different ones. Yeah, you know, because we didn't look like everybody else. I mean, now you know, times have changed. Like twenty plus years later, like there is, it's more multicultural in Germany in general. But when I was young and in school, there was maybe one other kid that was like had a black parent or something, mm. but. When your dad left, you were eight, you I said. Eight, yeah. What was going on at the time? What made him leave? Do you know? Bad, just, you know, he's an African 
African man and he he was just cheating on my mom, obviously, the whole time. And my mom was just not happy with him. And she stayed with him for way too long because of us, like so many women do. Yeah. Because of the children, you stay together. But he was not treating my mom good. Like, I, we experienced some stuff, like, where it's like, oh, you would never want to talk to your dad again. Like, you know, just physical, you know, domestic abuse and things yeah. like that. And we would witness it. And... I just remember one moment, especially where um, he hit my mom so hard that she fell on top of us. I I don't know. I think I was I was probably eight because it was around the time that she left. Um, and from that moment on, I was just so scared of him, just scared. Wow. And the crazy part is, I was his favorite child, so he always wanted me next to him, especially during the phase where he felt like my mom is going to leave him. Mm -hmm. He was holding on to me, always Ami. He called me Ami. You know, mm -hmm. my name's Amina, but to him, I was Ami. I mean, come sit with me. And it was like, he wasn't like mean, saying it in a mean way. It was like, I, I love you. I want you with me. Like, you know, things are bad right now. He wouldn't talk like that, but that's what I remember thinking in my head. Like, I just need you right now because, you know, yeah. my mom was trying to leave. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. And so he ended up, she ended up, oh my God, I'm burning this. Ah! It doesn't look burnt. No, it's not burnt. Okay, okay. good. We're good. See, this, this always takes a little longer when you have the stove on. But yeah, and so then my, my mom ended up getting my dad out. A year later, it took like almost a year. It felt like eternity that he was still in the house refusing to leave. But he was cheating, though. He was, yeah. He was, so. And he was like telling my mom things like, why are you worried about that? I always come back to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, those are the things yeah, yeah. That, that men say. I mean... Not every man. But when every you uh, when you went to New York, how soon was it before, or how soon after you moved to New York did you end up aligning with uh, Love and Hip Hop? Ooh, way, 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 way later. So the first, uh, my first 15 years in New York were just, you know, on the grind trying to make it in music, me and my sisters. You said first 15 years? Yeah, or like yeah. at least... Let's say 10. Okay. 10. okay. Yeah, I'm totally tripping. 10 years. Okay. So from 2002 to 2012, mm -hmm. me and my sisters were just like trying, you know, always making music together, got signed to Def Jam Records in 2005, 2006. Then, you know, we got dropped from the label. Then we got signed again, just me and my twin. At what this made point. them drop you guys? Um, <coughs> uh, A lot of reasons. This is ready, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just need the cinnamon on it, but um, they actually we didn't get didn't get dropped from Def Jam. It was like we asked to be released from the label because they were just holding us hostage. Yeah, yeah. And you know that. Um, okay, I'm trying to not mess up here. <laughs> so we were just not. Um, our album never came out, and we were signed. We got signed the same year that. Chris Brown, Neo, and Rihanna. Yeah, I was going to say that was the air, that year when they all of them were dropping. Nobody yeah. knew who they were, none yep. of them. And we actually did a lot of showcases with them, like yeah. with Neo, Rihanna, and, and Chris. And we did a, like small little radio tours throughout the, the nations. Um, and we were all new artists. And then Black Butterfly was kind of the only group, uh, our group, that didn't really get that big break. Yeah, you know, yeah. they all blew up. Yeah, yeah. Had big hit But well, they were putting a lot into them because I remember at that yeah. time I owned a magazine and they were like pushing Neo, pushing yeah. Chris Brown. They were, they were we doing We felt that way, you know, why aren't they, they're forgetting about us, yeah. right? Um, you know, they would probably disagree and say other things. There was a lot of politics involved. Yeah. It was also because we were signed um, to a joint venture label with Russell Simmons and L.A. Reid involved, and everybody had different opinions on what type of group we should be. Russell Simmons wanted us to be or, more urban and hip-hop, and L.A. Reid wanted us to be a big pop group. Mm -hmm. And so then he kind of like let let Russell kind of decide what direction he would take us in. So we ended up putting out the song called Bad Girl with Fabulous. And actually before that came Rockabye. It was our first single on Def Jam. And it was it was a good little run. Like it was played on the radio. Like we were so excited. We were you know thinking this could possibly blow up like crazy, and it did to a certain level. But yeah. it never became. And what know, was your pockets looking like at the time? Bad. That, they were that, bad. So you were you were, you were playing <laughs> yeah. it on the radio, but you were still. Broke. I'm telling you, I was a <clears throat> broker, being signed to a major label, than being just on the grind by myself. 
And wow. people always think, oh, he signed to a label, you know. And I mean, you get an advance, but that maybe our advance at the time wasn't a lot, and it lasted maybe six months. Yeah. And then after that, you still signed for two, three more years. And you just gotta survive. You, yeah, you're not making money. So we were broke a lot while being signed to major record labels. Yeah. I think I heard Pink was like that. Like at some point she went broke and she was pumping gas. And they, I think L.A. Reid ended up being like, no, we got to pull her off the street. She was just like, well, you ain't giving me money. I'm going to survive. Exactly. We were, you know, it wasn't the Def Jam deal, but I remember after the Def Jam deal, we got signed to J Records, me and my twin. Mm -hmm. Our oldest sister had left the group at this point. Um, but we were signed to J Records and every month, we were like, who's going to make the call? We always had to call our, you know, the, we were signed to projection slash management under J Records. So every month we would be like, who's going to call and ask for the rent money? It always had to be one of us. like And ask for the rent yeah, money. Yeah. And then we ended up getting evicted, too, in, in Brooklyn, New York. We ended up getting evicted. Wait, so wh why was the deal built like that, where they were just giving you a check for your rent? They gave us a check in the beginning of when you signed the... Yeah. The, Record like deal. Your MG, your minimum guarantee. And then you get some money. At, it was, I don't even remember the amount, but it wasn't a big advance. I mean, now they talk a million dollar advances and things like that. We never had that. Yeah. Um, so our advance, like I said, after like about six months, maybe a year, ran out and we had nothing. And um, we were, yet we were signed working on albums and flying out here to L.A. to record with Tank and different people. But, you know, we were literally signed for three years just recording, and they never had seemed to have a plan to release our... our so our then releases. you guys got released. You were smart enough to get released. Yeah. Now, what kind of... Were you working any side hustles while all this is going on, or...? Um, yeah, so eventually, you know, we were like, okay, we got to do something. We got to pay our, <laughs> our bills. And, yeah. you know, we were living in a small railroad apartment in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, very small, three of us. It was me, my twin sister, and our one of our best friends that we grew up in Germany with. Esther is her name, and she um, was kind of like a person. Watch that stove, by the way. Oh yeah, I, I don't want you to burn yourself. Yeah, I turned turn it off. Yeah. So she was like our personal manager, roommate, best friend. Yeah. And so it was the three of us living there, and um, that was the time when we always had to ask for the rent, and we were signed. It was just so crazy, and I just even remember one moment that sticks out. That was so crazy because we would be around like Russell Simmons and Jay Z and all the people. Like we would go to these major events, be next to the biggest, you know, the biggest stars all the time. Just in these uh, one side of our world was that, and then we would come home and have nothing. Like, and it was so just. I don't even know what word I want to say. It was just so weird. And we would even go to like Russell Simmons' house. He was married to Kamora Lee Simmons at the time. They had a golden toilet. Mm -hmm. And I just, it's just like little things that yeah. you remember, right? So the golden toilet on one side, and then you come home and you don't have money to buy toilet paper. Yeah. Like <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's, uh, I remember when I was struggling, I would always have this thing. It'd be like, uh, you'd either have a car or you'd have no gas money or something. It was always like, it was mm -hmm. like you had the car, but you didn't have the gas money or you had the gas money, but you didn't have the car. And I mm -hmm. feel like that's kind of what you're oh, yeah. saying. You're like, I couldn't even afford the toilet paper. So what did you guys do to survive those times? Did you guys take out jobs? I ended up taking a job. And then, you know, at that point, we had already been signed again for three years and nothing was happening. We were like, okay, we were learning that being signed really doesn't mean anything. Yeah that you have money or that you're going to make it. Yeah. It doesn't. It just means that somebody decided to maybe even sign you as a text writer or whatever the case. Yeah. Like, you know, you're just signed and you are put to work. But at the same time, I found myself so much just working on myself. And that's why, I'm, you know, I'm thankful for it going that way because it made me just work on myself more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were broke, <laughs> and I ended up going on Craigslist and finding a job um, as a singer. I was determined to not find a job like a regular job, okay, something good. I hate. Yeah, I wanted to do something I love. I would go on Craigslist, like look for singer jobs. Okay, and that's how I ended up finding um, the job that I then did for like four years. Spike Lee Love and Hip Hop. Um, I also met Peter Gans at this job, <laughs> my baby daddy. 
and her ex-husband. <laughs> um, so I worked at the Village Underground in New York as a singer in the band. They, he hired me immediately, the owner, Noam Dorman, shout out to you, was amazing. He helped me so much and, you know, I kind of a new era began for me. And that's kind of when the group with my sister kind of faded out a little bit because mm -hmm. now I was busy with something just for me. You know, I was busy with other things, that something that was fun for me, making me money. It was like, almost like, um, it was like school for me in a way because I learned being on stage. You know, all these years being signed, we, we didn't perform much. We didn't really. You guys are just in the studio. We were, yeah. And when I, you were in the room with these celebrities like Russell and Jay, did you? How were you able? Were you able to even maximize, or were you, did you feel like imposter syndrome, where like maybe you didn't belong, so you were just happy to be in the room? I mean, we were always happy to like you know, once you come into the big Def Jam office and you see your own picture big like on the biggest wall inside there, like on the twenty eighth floor. I remember we coming up there and it's us like. Everybody believed, it seemed like everybody believed that Black Butterfly was going to be the next, you know, big thing. And then it just doesn't happen that way. Everybody's looking at, like, who's to blame, right? Yeah. And um, I just remember, like, that one, when we dropped our second single, because the album never came out, but when we dropped our second single, like, we went into Jay-Z's office one time, because apparently he asked to see Black Butterfly, and... Um, so we went in there and he gave a great advice to me that I always, I keep mentioning it because it was just great. Like he just wanted to know how we feel about, you know, everything that was going on at the label. And um, at the time I was kind of like feeling a little like a puppet, like they were just telling me what to do and I was just doing it, but I wasn't really happy. And yeah. I feel like a lot of artists that yeah, have Neo signed, expressed that. Yeah. Uh, if you ever watched his interview, I mean, really? his first record, yeah, yeah. he ended up and that was walking. Time. Yeah. It was like they tell you what to do. If you have anything to say against it, you're hard to deal with. Yeah. You don't listen. And we try to just be quiet and just do what they say, but yet everyone was telling us to do something different. So this person was saying, just 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 do what, what you're being asked to do or just, you know, and then the next person would say like Jay-Z in this moment, he was like, you got to be more like Kanye and stand up for what you want. You can't put anything out there that you don't believe in. I loved it because mm -hmm. I felt that I was like, yeah, but how are we supposed to do that? We no. Nope, Wait, we what year was this? This was what, the early did Kanye, years did, But Kanye wasn't out yet then, was no, he? he? Well, he was out. He was just. Wait, what year did Kanye start to drop? He's dropped in 2000. He was already, I mean, people knew of him, but he wasn't like... Oh, when did the college like, dropout come out? I don't remember. I don't remember, that. but... So you're saying he was like, be like, be I, very vocal about what you want. Yes. But it's interesting that Jay would say that. I'm a huge Jay-Z fan. There's a huge Jay-Z painting in my lobby, but yeah. I will say this. It's easier for a man, in my opinion, you could correct me, to speak up in this male-dominated industry than a woman. Because if you would have came in that room and said, yeah, Jay... I'm the shit, exactly. and you ain't nothing. What would what do you think they would have said? And I'm not gonna say Jay because Jay is you know <laughs> my favorite, but I'm just saying like in your position, did you feel like as a woman you could be like Yay? No, that's why I felt like it was so contradicting because I loved what he was saying. I was like, yeah, I want to be more like that, but but they're not letting us. Like they, if we do that, then we're being called this and that, and a like bitch, you know, uh, uh, this so it and that, was yeah. like a hard. It was pulling. It was you know stressful. Being signed, you always try to please everyone else, yeah. and then especially you self, when you're you young, because you're like, I don't want to blow this. Right. I'm like that with the black effect. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want to mess up, and then all of a sudden they realize I'm not that great, yep, or whatever. Um, but I'm just gonna, I want to try this pancake. Let's try before, before it gets, gets cold. cold. Yeah. Exactly. You know, Take maybe my first bite. it might need sugar on top. I put sugar on top. Um, let me see if I put enough sugar. It's probably not sweet. There's enough sugar in it. Mm mm. Really? You want it sweeter? You don't wear uh, use like, syrup? Mm, you can. I, I'm not. I used to eat it just like this. More cinnamon and sugar. Like, mm -hmm. just sprinkle some on top. And it's like, you know, yeah, the only difference it. really is, because you can use syrup, is that it's not fluffy. And it's more like a crepe. I'm not a huge fan of crepes. But mm. if I had yeah. to choose between this and a crepe, I would choose this. Mm. Okay, I would yeah. say this is filling. It's missing sugar, but... Mm. 
I normally don't like sweet stuff, but this has to be a little sweeter. <laughs> well, with the sugar on top, it's yeah. okay. I think it's fine with just sugar. Yeah. This is not considered vegan, right? No, because it, you know, has milk, egg. <laughs> it's probably the opposite of vegan. I'll but... be honest. This is, it's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is not bad. This it's is almost like, it reminds me of like cornmeal, but in a pancake. Doesn't it? In contrast with the apples and oats, it's like, this is more filling and for sure. And you usually eat these together? Yeah, I would make both of it, like, most, like a lot of days, this would be my breakfast. Like, this, that, both together. We could eat breakfast together, just add a little, <coughs> add a little bacon, we're good. Ah, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I've never been a big, you know, meat for breakfast eater, but, um. Let's I feel like it just needs, like, them. something salty. Salty on that? No, like. Oh, if you with had the it, apple and the oats it. and the pancake, like you just right? need something. No, you're right. You can definitely have like a sausage something. with it or something. And if you wanted to, you could put the apples and oats on top of this. Yep. Yeah. That would be. I think that's, that would be how I do it. Or I used to always um, eat this also with applesauce. It's also good. That's how it, you know. This is great. It's, it's filling. It is. Affordable. It's and I like cheap. that most of the ingredients are typically in your house. Mm-hmm. That's what made me start eating it so much because we always had flour. How hard was it for you to come up with a dish for today's show? Um, not so hard. It just this stuck out because I remember the times. <laughs> this was Both your survival. Times, yeah. You know the times in Brooklyn when we were trying to <laughs> live on a budget and not having much money, and then growing up in Germany. And my mom always making it for us. So it stuck out. It stuck out. And you know what's crazy? This recipe is in my, I have a cookbook. And this is in it. Oh, speaking of cookbooks, this will be added to the Eating Well Bro cookbook. Yeah. As your dish. Okay, this great. will be, so it will be in your cookbook, but we oh are going to be amazing. adding it as your signature dish, along with a bunch of other dishes that people ate when they're broke. Amazing. Okay, um, cool. <laughs> I should probably tell you that sooner, but hopefully you'll be okay. With it being in the book, so yeah, I'm okay with it. Um, totally. Now, now that you've fed me amazingly <laughs> well on budget, um, yeah. After experiencing uh, your record label fiascos mm -hmm. in your music industry, you start working at this club. Yes, this is where you meet your future ex husband. Yes. <laughs> I don't Correct. know. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so tell me, is that kind of where where did Love and Hip Hop and Peter Guns come and change the trajectory? Yeah, you know, um, first of all, like I was so blooming at the time because I didn't realize how unhappy I really was in these record deals. That once I was actually doing what I love, which is sing on a stage every single night, like and making money, um, that it was really like making me giving me a so much excitement just every day, like going to work. I loved it. I loved working there and singing. And I was around the greatest musicians, like you could imagine. And apparently someone named Peter Guns also loved that scene, that live music scene in New York. He would just be there and hang out every night and everybody knew who he was. And um, he was, I just remember he was always standing by the entrance of the club with shades on. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I would just be like, why are you wearing shades in, the, in, in this dark club? Like, I thought it was kind of, yeah. like, weird. Um, but, um, yeah, we, you know, it took a couple of years for him and I to connect. Because even at the in the beginning of me working there, I had a boyfriend, mm -hmm. one of the guys in the band. I was with him for, like, a year and a half. And he was also friends with Peter Guns. And we were all just a big family. And everybody knew, you know. Everybody was like friends with everybody. And <laughs> it was like um, kind of organically started like hanging out with Peter in a group. Yeah. Like so then when I broke up with my then boyfriend, Peter had already kind of been a friend. Yeah. Along, you know, we had hung out a bunch of times, but I never looked at him like I like him yeah. at all. Like that's, that's why it was so weird that it happened the way it did because I – I would, in the beginning, the first two years, I would look at Peter like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, first of all, he always got different women, like super womanizer, like, not my not my thing. Um, but then, you know, as I got to know him, we just became really cool friends, and that's what I always say. Me and Peter started as friends. And I 
just knowing or seeing how he moves uh, with women never really made me interested in anything else but just being friends with him. Um, however, that that didn't work out like that because we ended up yeah, actually. How, <laughs> how did that happen, you guys? Falling in love and okay. all that. Ugh. So I, yeah, y- <laughs> y'all fell in love, and then uh, how did love and hip hop end up in that? You know what? It was a timing thing. Me and Peter probably had like dated for about s- almost six months, mm-hmm. and one of his friends was rich dollars who already was on love and hip-hop yeah so me and peter would always hang out and do fun stuff we would go to the parks and we would um go to the movies and just do fun things and one day he was like let's go by the set my my boy is filming something you know so we went by the set like you know they were mm-hmm. filming love and hip-hop and he was just doing a kind of a cameo sitting in at, at a at dinner it was like a dinner scene and i was just there watching i was not involved but that's the night that it all started because, you know, the producers started talking to Peter. He's once he said, This is Amina, my wife, but I got a I got a girlfriend too. The producers were like, the next day I got a call. But wait, so you guys were dating a couple months and you guys got married? We got married after dating for like six months. So we we started dating summer of two thousand twelve. We got married February. 2013. And but he said he has a wife and a girlfriend. But did you know he had a girlfriend? I knew that he had Tara, the mother of his sons, that he still he was still living with. Oh, he was still living with. He was but still, while married to. He you. was still living with Tara, <coughs> but he said, you know, they're not together. So so. He would sleep at her house, but be like, no, he would sleep at my house every night. So he slept with in- me, every night with me. Maybe one night out of the week he wouldn't. So what? Would, would he would spend his days with her. He would during the day probably be with yeah with her, and then <laughs> and then he was with me every night. Okay, and then and then but so you kind and I knew at this point you know he didn't break up with her yet. That's why I wanted to do love and hip hop because I knew if we do love and hip hop, she will finally know what she needs to know. Oh, so she didn't know about you. No. That's the fucked up part. That she I, I, didn't know about you. No. Because, <laughs> that, yeah. That's the but kind of why, w- did he ever tell you why he proposed to you even though he had a girlfriend? No, you know, the way we got married, I have to say that because it's it's big. Um, the way we got married was more like out of desperation because, um, you know, I always say this, like we had a real relationship. We were really in love. We got married because of love, but we got married for a reason, and that is because Peter didn't want me to go back to Germany. Okay. So if it wasn't for that, we would have never gotten married. Got it. Got it. So he so wanted to. He, it was he a didn't combination of like when people say, "Oh, fake marriage. You just married for a fake." That's not true. Yeah. Because we were actually dating for real in love. You know, like we were. Not faking a relationship for me to get. Yeah, obviously, papers. obviously, I've, I've, a lot of people do that. My brother so, did that. Yeah, yeah, he didn't <clears> want <throat> me to have to go back to Germany. I was stressed out, and he was like, "I want you here. I want to be with you. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I would just marry you." That was it. Okay, that, that's how it went. So then, so did the, the, is your first time meeting Tara on Love and Hip Hop? Yeah. No, oh. no, 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 no. <clears throat> oh gosh, she's gonna hate me if I say this wrong. Um, no, I met her at the nightclub that I met Peter at. However. At, I didn't know that was his main girlfriend that has been with him for 13 years. I oh, wow. That. So are you guys good friends now, you and her? We're now, years later, <coughs> now we're finally at a place where we, we talk to each other. We Like, yeah, I can say I can say the word friend now. It took a long time, but we, we're friends. Um, when you look back at that whole situation, do you think that, do you have any regrets on how everything went down or if there, if there, if if there, if you could go back, what would you change? Even though I wasn't the responsible one, I have the regret that we went into doing love and hip hop without Tara knowing anything. You know that was definitely wrong. Even though Peter is the one that should have made sure he doesn't drag her on a show, and you know without knowing what you know what was really going on. The producers didn't even prep her for it. They loved it. They loved that she didn't know. Oh my god! You know they don't care about nothing. <laughs> now, were you guys making good money at the time during that show? The first season, no, not at all. Okay. It was more like, I was, you know, honestly, I had two reasons for going on Love and Hip Hop. The main reason was, okay, finally, people are going to see 
me as the artist, you know, loving hip hop is about music. I can yeah. finally showcase who I am. Of I course. can play my instruments and peop- millions of people are going to see me. That was my number one reason. Number two was I was in this situation that wasn't good. It wasn't comfortable. I needed, you know, Peter was telling me so many lies, constantly saying, oh, I'm going to tell her, I'm going to tell her. I knew if we did the show, it was finally going to come out, and that's all I wanted. I just yeah. wanted him to, you know, tell her what he did. And yeah. without Love and, if we would have never did Love and Hip Hop, I don't think he would have ever told Tara anything. Are, is him he and Tara still together or no? I no, from what I know, but I I can't say. Okay, it. but are know. you still with him? No. Oh my God, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> we divorced. We're you know we not at all. Now we, you guys were married for how long? Man. Together three years, married for probably six because the divorce took like three years. <laughs> but okay. we, I moved from New York in 2016. And since then, uh, you know, we were done. Like I, I probably was still hooked on him for a long, little bit of time. It took me a long time to get over him. A long well, time. you guys had kids together. We had a, yeah, and I was pregnant when I left. Too, yeah. Oh, you you left at I that left time because I remember the last time I had seen you on TV, you had like Tara had said she was pregnant. I don't even remember. Oh if my she god! Yeah, up, we were pregnant at the same time. So did she end up having hers? Yeah. So you guys have kids that are like same age, <laughs> seven. Gunner is seven, and Bronx is seven. My daughter and her son, they're both. And seven. then the kids now, you guys are friends, so your kids all. Oh yeah, out. they're they love each other, and I'm so happy we were able to come to like a place like where we. Don't blame each other. Like, you know, she may still feel some way about what happened back then, but we have, like, kind of forgiven each other. And we kind of more relate to one another because we were both so dis... You know, he was kind of, like, doing the same thing to both of us. So... Yeah, I felt like at some point it was, like, even though he was the causer of the mayhem, he kind of sat back and watched you guys. Yeah. <coughs> yes, he he kind of... A, a part of him enjoyed, I think that attention yeah, I don't know enjoyed but I know that he was helpless he did not know what to do he had made this big mess and it was fucked up and it was just bad and it seemed like the world hated him for it and he just didn't know how to make it right it wasn't no making it right he couldn't make it right now were you two the only one in the triangle do you know or were there other women too? I know I, I'm <laughs> I would almost bet on my kids it was uh, yeah there's there was definitely others, but we were the main. We were the main big, of the, yeah. You know, we it's displayed on, on the show and everything. But he definitely had other, you know, while he was living with me, we were living in Yonkers, New York. I had just had a baby. Um, obviously, he was still going between me and Tara. He also had others in yeah. the background. I know because I, I found out some things yeah. later. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't just us. But but it, I noticed you're like, he was living with you or he was living with Tara. Did he, was he, were you guys always the breadwinners or did he breadwin too? Um, You know, once we started, did Love and Hip Hop for multiple seasons, we were all kind of in the same boat. Like, it started being, like, it just was one of the biggest storylines ever. I, it was. Know? And at the time, it was also, the ratings were up crazy because yeah. of us and like definitely if you talk love and hip hop new york you know stands out is like what stands out is obviously cardi b and then like our stuff is yeah like at least as far as triangles and love like messiness goes i mean that was, was like when you were watching that season that's all you wanted to see but <clears throat> were you guys were you was peter stepping up financially for you guys or were you guys holding down the fort too <laughs> where he could you know he is a giver he gives he lives for his kids as far as like you know when he got it his kids are good yeah but because he has 10 children uh-huh. he's not always in the best position to like take care of everything and even at the time where he was living with me he was also have, having to help tara with you know with whatever rent and all that bills and he was not able to cover everything for everybody. So yeah. he was doing as much as he could. But so know? now as a woman, being a single mom, providing, now the whole world knows you. What are you thinking? Like, like how are you healing and taking care of yourself? Because I feel like if I was in your shoes, there would be so many conflicting emotions from, you know, outside opinions to how I see myself, how I ended up in this position. You know, even you and Tara... Thankfully, I'm glad to hear that you guys have this bond where you guys mm-hmm. can kind of be like, 
Ugh, yeah. That was kind of a shit show, you know? Yeah, that's um, exactly what it is. I wish more women kind of like, you know, like when my husband cheated on me, I wish the side chicks would just like at least reach out. Yeah. Kinda, and and not, in a, not so in a vulgar way, but just reach no, out and I be agree. like, look, you know, this dude, oh boy, <coughs> is telling me this. You know, we do have this type Absolutely. of relationship. Do you want to compare notes? Not like, I'm going to take your man or I'm going to be the side chick. Because a lot of the side chick, the side chicks are like, I don't know, I feel like they're, there's confusion in the loyalty. Or I don't know how the com- the side conversations go. But a part of me is like, yo, approach me woman to woman. like. No, absolutely. And I, which is so crazy to say, I was the side chick, but I was also the wife. Yeah. <laughs> so it was so weird, um, the position I was in. And I just remember, I always wanted to do that. And he would always somehow stop me. Yeah. You know, until that scene in Love and Hip Hop where I was the one that, brought her the news like I because he just wouldn't do it and he kept saying don't worry I'll do it I'll do it and then he just wouldn't and at one point I was like that's it I will tell her and uh, was he mad at you when you did it oh yes oh my god oh my god (laughs) it (laughs) oh my god yeah he was especially because we were filming the show it was on camera and it was it was just he was like I wanted to tell her in private yeah but you didn't yeah, you never did. You never found the time. Um, well, after Love and Hip Hop taped mm-hmm. and you moved to L.A. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, new beginning. New, new life beginning. started. For what me. was your pockets looking like? Fine. <laughs> it was good enough for me to not have to worry about. Like, I was able to get me an apartment, like a nice apartment. Um, I had my car. I had everything I needed. I was pregnant. I had my one-year-old. And I wasn't concerned about, oh, my God, I got it you know, I gotta make money because I would have been good for, for some time. Like I was good for about probably a, a year before I had to think about a year. Oh, yeah. Now it's yeah. I see had, though I with had, a one year old, like when I had my baby, like a year to me of being good is still like freak outable. It is. It I is. think especially cause if you don't it, have someone to call and be like, yo, can you cover my rent? No, like, absolutely. It is still freak outable. And then if you're pregnant, the but only- you were also still in love too. Right. Yeah, I was absolutely. It was the hardest. So it was probably one of the. Hard, it was. I always say it's the hardest thing I ever had to do is leave that situation alone and leave that man alone and really, really let it go. It took two years, and the thing is, like you said, it is freak outable if you think about it. Okay, I have a year, but then I, I don't know what's next. And then the where, where reason, was your money from? Love and hip hop. Yeah. Okay. The only reason that I wasn't freaking out is because my whole life has been that way. You know, I was used yeah. to it. I never knew. I was never stable. My whole life has been a whole grind, like, trying to figure it out. And I have to say, even now, you know, yeah. I'm not ashamed to say, like, you still have to figure out what's next. You know, you're trying to build up things. Like, and I'm 40 now, and I'm a mom, and I'm a single mom, and um, I still make my music, which I'm so proud of and still so passionate about, but it's not enough to live the life that I feel like I... So how do you survive, like, work-wise? Are you... Um, you know, um, I have a couple of different things, like a few different things that I'm also um, doing um, some fitness. Like, I'm studying to be a yoga instructor. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very passionate about that, about yoga. And I have my books. I still have my music, which I do make money with. Mm-hmm. It's just not the amount that I would like. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but I make money with my music. I, you know, I, performances, so the, gigging. I'm a musician, so I, you know, I gig here and there. And do you get paid to do appearances still or no? I get paid to do appearances not as much as it was when, when we were on Love and Hip Hop. Yeah. Obviously, you get booked all the time when you're on TV. And now it's been years since I was on TV. And it's like you don't get booked as much. So it's still like I'm still grinding <laughs> out here, you know? What, Ed, like, as a single mom, how were you able to handle it, I guess, with the two, yo- the babies being younger? Because now they're older. But, like, were you crying at all, or were you... You know, the first two years of moving to L.A., having a newborn and a one-year-old, two-year-old, um, yeah, I was crying all the time. And like, where was your <sighs> twin? She was in Germany. She had moved oh, back to Germany shoot. way, So way you were long. really on your oh, own. Oh, yeah, I was all by myself. And even looking back, it's now <laughs> like, wow. I look at it from the outside in, it, it's more of a wow factor than when you were in it. When I was in it, it was like... It's just what it is. I, you know, I took it day by day. And um, I just know that I was mostly heartbroken more than feeling like, 
like defeated by life. Like it was more like heartbreak that I really had to heal from. Like I said, it took me two years. Once I healed from a heartbreak, I really wasn't, I felt so powerful and like I can do anything and so good about life again and all those things. Did you ever date again? Yeah, I'm currently in a relationship. <laughs> is it a health is it healthy now? Or? Yeah, it's I'm learning so much because I don't have, you know, the issues that I've had in the past with men, mm -hmm. which always kind of related to other women. Yeah. Cheating, lies. I don't have that issue. It's so relaxed with that. That that I'm learning that there's other issues that you can have in, in relationships, you know? Like I never knew that. I always thought all I want is someone who doesn't lie and cheat. Yeah. And I'm the only one. I have that now, but it's still not perfect. Yeah. But it's it's different and it's it's so many good things that I'm so thankful for that I never believed that it's possible because <laughs> I thought all oh, men cheat and all oh, men do this and Well, and yeah, now when I look at men, I look at them differently. I'm like, okay, like especially today's age, I think guys are like more like if a girl doesn't sleep with them on the within date three or whatever, like the, the bar is. And I'm like, well, did we mess up as women? Are we not yeah. setting enough boundaries or yeah, like why the bar? I feel like men, it should have been women are the pickers mm -hmm. or what have you, and we we have so much more power than I even knew we had. I didn't know women oh, were yeah. so powerful till I had a kid. But yeah, that's the same way I feel <clears throat> like yeah. I would like I hate when I hear men say I would die for my kid. I'm like, well, well why don't you try living for your kid? Yes. Why don't you try like putting down the alcohol, yes. putting down the bitches and like actually living yes. for your kid? I, love that. I can't stand when a dude will say I would die for my I yeah. would murder for my kid. Well, go out there and get a job for your kid. Yeah, I agree with you. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Because I promise you, Amina. If your back was against the wall mm -hmm. and you love singing and you love all these things and you had to go work at Costco to put some food in your kids' mm -hmm. mouths, I guarantee you, you'll be saying paper yeah. or plastic. It's same for me. Yeah. But but we don't have to go out there and say, I would die for my kid. No, because every day we wake up, we exactly. make a conscious choice to live. Even on a day that you think about quitting on life, like, you, you know, heartbreak to me is the most painful thing yeah. ever. And if you ever think about giving up on life, you're like, as a mom, you're like, well, who the fuck is going to take care of my kid? If do I even have a plan in place if I were to be gone? Mm -hmm. No, well, I don't have that plan. Then I got to stay here every day and wake up and fight the good fight. Yeah. But I commend you as a woman uh, for going through everything you did publicly. Yeah, and <clears throat> even though you may have been the side chick wife or whatever, yeah. the, the end goal was like you kept pressuring this dude to tell his girl. Yeah. The truth. And oh, my God. That was all I wanted from the very beginning. And it's good. It it's good to hear that too side, long. too, because. You know, sometimes we look at the side chick like, well, why are you in the dark so much? But I remember when I found out about my husband's side chick, she was like in the closet for like years with him. And they were like going back and forth on text. And I was just like, the fuck are you in the closet in the years for this fool? Like, you know what I'm saying? No, I totally approach it differently, too. Like, because of that, you know, I know what it's like to be, yeah. be, be like hidden. It's one of my requirements now. Anyone I date, like my boyfriend now knows <laughs> we've we've been through that, like. I like I one of my requirements now is like I have to be posted on social media. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Some women like ah, you know, that's gonna destroy your relationship. You gotta, you know, keep stuff private. No, it's a requirement for me. If you are exclusively dating me and we are in a serious relationship, that you show me off, display me, you know, yeah, to the world. Well, it's also like it. I say, women, if we're in a relationship, we got we have the same way the guy has to feel like the king, the woman has to feel like a queen. Period. Yeah. Period, point blank. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, but I have seen, like, my husband was posting pictures and videos of me, like, every day. And the side chicks would be, like, in the DMs, like, oh, you celebrated your one-year wedding anniversary. Can we meet up and I hook up with you? And be like, oh, these chicks don't care. No. They're like, I'll, no. I don't care if you're married or and not. I, yeah, I'm aware. Like, when I say, like, I need to be displayed, it's like, it's not just for you. It's just for you to feel exactly. like the queen. Not because it's going to stop him from, uh, yeah. you know, I know that men can do what they want, no matter how much yeah. pictures of me are on his page. Yeah, I, I feel but. like it's a, it's a selfish decision. My, I, I, I'm in a very toxic situation now, but I will say that, like, I'm, I'm, I'm taking my time through it. Um, and, like, being able to meet with other single moms or meeting, becoming a mom has been brought me more closer, to, I feel like, to women, more respect I towards it. women. It's, and I, I don't think yeah. I ever had before. 
Um, but I also look at men like way differently. Like the way oh the God. game is played now is not. You know, the and same. it's. I have to say, me and my bo- current boyfriend, he he complains about it because he's like, I don't deserve that, you know, because I do also. He's like, y- your whole view of men is is different because of your past, not me. But but then I say to him like, yeah, but you are a man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm not them. Like we have this all the time. It's like he thinks it's unfair. Because I've come out of this such a different person, stronger. I don't allow nothing. Like, I don't allow any kind of, you know, I'm, I'm so much more. My, my standards are different. Like, my boundaries are set. And I am just not to be played with now, which I love for me. I love that I've become this way. I feel better this way. When you see, like, a red flag. So I used to see a red flag pointed out to my girlfriend in the beginning of whenever I dated. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I saw that. As a red flag, and I would ignore it. I saw a post somewhere, somewhere, something said, when you see a red flag and you ignore it, that is the same red flag that you will leave in yeah. the end for. Yeah, it's true. Um, So now I'm like, red flag? Yeah. But, you know, I, me too. But I then think about it and, like, realize that it's, I mean, red flags, of course, are different from, like, issues. But it's never gonna. It's never perfect. Yeah, I've I've never seen a perfect. Matter of fact, I know relationships that look perfect from the yeah. outside, and I'm like, they not happy. So, <laughs> I think that's what slowed down my process of leaving my husband is like, whether I can deal with everything. But right now, what I am learning on right now, married or not, I still consider myself single because I don't have a counterpart that mm-hmm. respects me yeah. or enough. But what I will say is, uh, uh. I need to focus on my own happiness absolutely, and just stay in that. What does my happiness look like with or without somebody mm-hmm. there? And whether I'm married or not, that's where my head's at. So like, true. Um, and I think what I can learn from men are is that they focus on their needs. Yeah. Women, it's like we're designed to put the mask on the person next to us before ourselves. Now I'm like, you know what? Like I, when it comes to my child who is helpless, mm-hmm. who cannot wipe her butt or feed herself, she is the person that will go before me, but as yeah. far as everybody Same. else, Same. absolutely not. Same. But I am terrified to date with a child. How how was that is, hard? It is um, very yeah. hard because you know they always come first. Like the, the kids, like but, my girls, they come first. Like you just said, yeah. like even before me. Yeah. Nothing else though. Um, I am also at a place which none of my past relationships were like this where. I actually do put me first now, even within the relationship, which sometimes causes some, you know, it yeah. does also cause some, because they call you selfish. You know, I've, I've been called selfish a lot since I've gotten out of the But if you learn from men, that's what they're doing. <laughs> selfish yeah. is not selfish if it's, you know, if, if you, if it's, ne- it's necessary sometimes, yeah. yeah, you know, to put yourself first doesn't mean you're selfish. <laughs> yeah. And I had to just, I have to stick by that. Even in my current relationship, like, I always have to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I put myself first. Doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Like, unfortunately, yeah. um, I'm still, I'm still growing it. that past that mountain. I'm 39. I'm like almost there. Oh I feel God, like once like I turn me? 40, it's a wrap. Oh, are we the same? About the same. I'm a little. Dude, we're in the valley. We could do a. Well, yeah. my baby's young. She's only. Well, she's two, but she. Oh, but I think she's a yeah. teenager. But, really. <laughs> You know, oh my God, I have an almost teenager. She's nine. My daughter is nine now. I saw an eleven year old that looked like a teenager the other day. I thought she was sixteen. Nowadays. She had like boobs and stuff. I'm like, I didn't even have boobs till I was like eight, seventeen or something. I know. I, know it's I don't know. Now. Like uh, they're putting hormones in the food. Is, your daughter hasn't hit puberty yet, right? No, but she acts like a teenager for sure. Yeah, like her look wise, she probably looks her age, but no, she acts. I think weird. mine just acts. I I'm I haven't been, I had never been around a baby. I haven't Zariah very late, but. I will say, like, like the more she like sings her alphabets or her her mm. numbers or something, I'm like, like what happened? Like she she wasn't even talking I know, a couple months. That's what everybody's saying, and I kind of hate the clinginess. But then my friends are like, you gonna "You're gonna miss, miss that it. shit." It's true. And I'm I like, keep, okay, like I having I have like we make promises. Me and my daughters like promise me that because we like to be physical and cuddle and that's just how love I love on each other so much. I think it's so important. I always say that on social media, like, 
give your kids physical love, hug them, you know. Yeah. Like, so I do that a lot with mine, and I always have, like, make this promise with them, please promise me that you'll still let me do this when you're 16, 18. <laughs> <laughs> and they've promised so far, but I know it's probably yeah, They're 16, gonna... they'll be like, look, you get yeah. one a week, <laughs> one hug, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm scared, yeah. Every, everyone, everybody I've met has said, like, at some point, she's not going to want to be around you. So yeah. as of, like, the last week, I will say, like, now – I just enjoy it. I do Good. still sleep with her. Yeah. I um, love that. Some people are against her or I'm whatever. Not at all. I'm I, like, there are I some nights where she'll make me sleep in her room. Yeah. You know, I sleep in her room. I with my girls. For, sometimes they, they, on the weekends, they still sleep with me every like Saturday, probably, or Friday night. Now, how often do you switch it off with Peter? Never. Oh, so you're 100%. Yeah, I'm that, 100%. Does he ever see the kids? He hates. California, LA specifically, he does not like to come here. Mm -hmm. He is still bitter and mad about the fact that I moved here. Mm -hmm. He's like, I hate coming here. Why did you have to move so far away? Mm -hmm. Taking my kids away from me. So he's kind of blaming me that he can't see him as much. But I'm like, yo, like, like. Case in point, like I said before, I'm sure he's going to be the first to be like, I'll die for my kids. Oh, but yeah. getting on a flight to go yeah. see your kids is, and I'm not trying to bash him. No, but I agree like, with you 100%. If the roles were flipped and he moved, would you not make the time to figure it out? I don't care if eight of those kids are on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. It's not your problem, dude. You made that decision on whether I could leave yeah. the second you stepped out. Um, but I'm s way more respect to know that you're really doing this shit on your own. Yeah, so and then you're, are you, is he at least helping financially or no? Not really. Way he can. I still say, you know, he's. he's just, I don't know what word I can put on him, but like I know that he. He's like you said, like he's he would do anything for his kids. He's not just not always in a position to You be think there. that's it? Or do you think he's no, making I a know that's, I know that's it. Okay. Because yeah, he, he gives when he can. It's just not what it should be. <laughs> yeah. But you're doing it. So you're I'm the you're it. the mom and the dad. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? More props to you. Mm -hmm. uh, trust me, I'm married and I'm the mom and the dad, <sighs> pretty much. So I, I, it was never any different for me. And, you know, honestly, I also didn't grow up with that mindset. Like, I mean, my mom was a single mom and it was normal. It wasn't like the man is supposed to provide. And like, I didn't grow up thinking that even because I was never taught that. Like my mom always made us feel like if you ever have kids, they are your kids. That's that's all I knew. So I knew by the moment I was pregnant, I was like, I'm going to have kids, not we. Oh, OK. You know, so for me, maybe that, that that's wrong to think that way. But to me, it was always like. I'm going to have to take care of these kids. Like I, I came from two-parent household, and I think that's where me and my husband always argue. He'll be like, mm -hmm. I came from a single parent. I come from a two-parent, but I was very strict. Like, look, yeah. if we're going to do this, we're going to do this together. But then I always hear the Tupac verse in my head, Mama's baby, Papa's maybe. Is it Tupac or oh, was it Jay? I, I forgot. I don't know. No, I think it's Jay. It is? I think it's Jay. I don't know. But anyways, fact check me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's Jay. How dare I disrespect <laughs> Jay? Um, anyways, uh, yeah, like, um, now I realize it's mama's baby. No matter what, yeah. I'm your ride or die. I'm your best mm -hmm. friend. I'm your soldier, and I absolutely adore they, you. They'll know that. I mean, they... Yeah, you ain't got to tell them. You yeah. can just show them. But thank you so much for coming on the show and yeah. blessing me with a great meal and being extremely That's transparent. Awesome. Where can people keep up with you and, like, what is going on? Like, what projects do you have going on? And you yes. can say it directly to oh, him. Oh, yes. Oh, this one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I just released the album this year. It's my first ever – I mean, it's my fourth full album as an independent artist. So it's crazy to think I've put out albums independently but never with a label, <laughs> even mm -hmm. though I was signed multiple times. And um, So the album is called 4.0 and um, produced by me exclusively. Um, and, um, yeah, besides that, you know, check out my books. I have my dishes and more. So with the I am I dishes and more available on Amazon. And then I also have my, the other woman, if you are more interested in my story, because it talks about everything kind of we talked about today and then, you know, being in the public eye with my relationship. So the other woman and my dishes and more. And, um, yeah, I have fitness events coming, you know, like I said, I'm into fitness and yoga and all that stuff me and my boyfriend actually having our first event coming up next month fit for life um so you know i do all the things that i love i like to i just like to do things that i love and not fall into the trap of oh i have to do this because 
you know. I love that. Now, you self-published your books? Yes. Well, the first one was published by a publishing company, 13th and Joan, that came out in the year I moved to California in 2016. And um, I always say anybody that watched me on the show and has an opinion of me, read the book and then you can say I want to read it. Yeah. yeah. I should have brought you one. I um, forgot. But yeah, the other woman. Um, and yeah, that's it. Like, just follow me on social media at Amina Butterfly with two Ds. And yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Just so you guys know, behind the scenes, I've met Amina before. I think I may have said it earlier. Super sweet, super easy to talk to from the day I met you. So when I, I think uh, your publicist and I have, I th- well, it was actually through yeah, Tammy. Yeah, it's Asia's, crazy. Asia's mother-in-law. It okay. yeah. I didn't realize until today. That yeah, and so that's, so full circle, yeah. she has seen, I had seen your name on the list and I said, oh no, I definitely want to have Amina on the show for right. sure. Um, but it's nice to come yeah, full circle. But if you're is. ever bored in the valley I on, on the say. weekends, I'll be doing nothing. I I'll be honest. I say, yeah, so, no, let's do something I'll just with be the kids. doing something with the kids. Me yeah, too. Well, I'm my always, daughter. I'm always with I'm always trying to find something cool. I heard Irvine's doing like this cool pumpkin patch thing. Oh, yeah. And going. they have like a children's museum right close oh, to it. Nice. But they have like farm animals and all this. So I'm going to do like a two a day adventure. And then oh, nice another time. mom hack I learned, which okay. for anyone <laughs> listening, this is a cool hack. I got in someone's friends and family for the hotels. Oh, really? Yeah, and I tell people, if you, especially if you have follow, a following, I had my little brother do this post on social, like, do you work at the Marriott or the Hilton? Mm-hmm. And when they put you on friends and family, you get like 50% off on what? your hotels. Ooh, yeah, I'm so now if I go to San Diego or Irvine and I don't want to drive back, I'll just book a hotel. It'll be like at the Hilton or the Marriott for like 100 bucks. Wow. Okay. So that is, that's a cool mom hack, right? That's amazing. <laughs> and so <laughs> now when I travel... I don't have to worry about hotel accommodations because I could stay in a good hotel yes. for half the price. And I mean, you have to do your research and play around yeah. in the app. But like I always tell people, like, don't just think about making money, but think about how you can save money. I'm so all about that. <laughs> if you want, steal it. If I see you're on your yeah. social that you post, do you work at any of the hotels or the airlines is another one. Post uh-huh. like, do you work for the airlines? DM me. Do you work for the hotels? Because all they have to do is add Gosh. you add your information and then you're good to go and yeah. they just extended that discount to you wow and so now i literally travel wherever i want because i know that the hotels aren't gonna you know so if i want to go to san diego i don't have to worry about driving yeah. back you know right so staycations are a we lot just easier went there too a few months ago i'm yeah, telling you is. take my advice I and then know. if you, worst case scenario if it's something local you could just hit me i'll sign you okay. into the hotel but i've hooked up plenty of my friends but i my little brother just did it recently. He got the same Hilton. He's like, dude, it's so Amazing. plush. And it's okay. just about reaching out to your network and saying, hey, if you work here, can you extend yeah. your discount? Right. So right. mom hack of the day, guys. Anyways, <laughs> thank you. Check us out on Eating While Broke. Check out Amina's books or music yes. online <coughs> and support. Yes. All right. Support us. Peace Thanks out. So much.